So then, welcome everybody to the beginning of the campaign of, for the Eastlings of Rune. Uh, we are technically bad guys, but not really. So, anyway, thank you everyone that participated in the poll that I did in the final episode of the Angmar campaign. That campaign is now finished and over. And looking at the results, I think the top one was for this faction. Now, though, I could have added the two dwarven uh, votes together and that would have caused these two to be equal. But I think following Angmar up with another evil faction in a previously unexplored region of the world is a suitable um, acquisition. Now, the dwarves, they may well yet appear in a campaign coming soon. Who knows? Um, but uh, we obviously still have the Gondor campaign running beside this one. Right then, something that I have not done before. We, I think we, it's good to set out some uh, house rules right here at the beginning. Something I've learned from other content creators. Um, you know, let's let's try and make this campaign really, really good as well. So the first rule, of course, is that before we strike at anyone else, we must unite the clans. That is our number one goal. And only at that point are we capable of marching beyond our land. So that is the first act, if you like. Um, secondly, no map information with anyone. So usually you can actually Select, uh, flog off your map information for quite a substantial amount of money. I am going to choose not to do that until there's a bit of interaction with the blue wizards. Now, whilst the script does not directly link with us, it's uh, a Candish script, I think a bit of story to add um, to that, depending on our political uh, stance at the time would be quite good to add. So I'm, I'm not going to go into it any further than that, but uh, no map information to begin with. And then th uh, thirdly, no cheesing of the sieges. So previously, particularly in the Gondor campaign, what I would do is use the towers, sally out and get them just to fire at the enemies like that. And you'd get like hundreds of kills freely whilst they were building siege equipment. I'm not doing that. That perhaps also kills the fun for some of you guys uh, watching. So I've taken that on board and I'm not going to do that. And I also mean that in the offensive way where you can have one unit on its own and then place the rest of the army round the side and then the garrison sallies out thinking that it's just one against one or something. I don't know. You kind of trick them into attacking you. I'm not going to be doing that either. And then um, finally, uh, act within like five turns of the blue wizard script and i'm just saying that really here to kind of promise all of you guys that uh, this shouldn't be just a straightforward easterlings of room campaign you know where you just go in smash door win uh, and then you keep on traveling up the river keldwin and smash all your enemies in that direction there could be some interaction with the tribes of the south and Mordor as well. Um, so without, I mean, I've been talking way too long here. So how about we just hop on in? So it's long campaign rules and all of that. Very hard, very hard. And I'm sure you've probably noticed all of this already. Uh, we've got some very interesting units. So let's get on in there. Welcome to Divide and Conquer. And also, welcome unto you all, uh, those of you that have not previously watched any of my videos before. Also, you can just um, pause here if you want to read this. Um, to any of you that have not previously watched any of my videos before, this is me. Um, and thank you very much for watching. And that's the end of the video. Alright, see you guys. Um, <laughs> um, so I do... These kinds of videos, uh, playing DAC and also some DCI Last Alliance and then I do some lore videos every week on a Friday. And uh, this is just an overview for the barracks event. So in we go. Diplomatic information. This is just the standard stuff that pops up uh, mainly about the Ar Ardunayim. Um, right, so this is all we start off with. And just a disclaimer, right at the beginning, I have not played as this faction before. If you are looking for an expert... Uh, guide on how to play this, then you are 
in the wrong place. Nonetheless, I hope it is um, going to be entertaining somewhat. I'd say I'm a reasonably okay player at this game. Um, but I am, like, you know, obviously all factions play differently. And there might be a an optimal route for you to travel through, take different areas. But I don't know any of that. My knowledge extends as far as watching Arahir Galaderathon's overview videos. And that's about it. So, I hope that you can deal with that. Right, so what do we begin with? We've got 10 grand in the bank. We've got Khan Margos, who comes with Loknar Rim. And I think their stats are probably a bit better than they allude to here. Because, I mean, I've, as I said, I've not played as them before. But they're pretty good in terms of all this stuff. But that 5 missile attack isn't that high. But the Flaming Arrows does seem to be quite a bit more damaging. So maybe that's more of a six or a seven and they don't have the negative of reduced uh rate of fire or accuracy from it so that is a pretty good unit and then we've got some daritai um crossbowmen warriors clansmen and hunters so we're not very good at this tier and then in here we've just got pretty much the same but lokan rukar now, as I said, we cannot... Oh, let's have a look at diplomacy as well. Actually, I had no idea. Okay, so we are allies of the Variags of Kand and Mordor. And Mordor, of course, is over here. And Variags of Kand are all the way down there. So we don't actually border either of them. We don't actually border anyone at all. We border the rebels. Now, what we must do is unite the clan. So, um, I know Mataram is over here. And all the Unite the Clans is, for those of you that are wondering, is that similar to how Harad works, in that you can... Ooh, nice. You, you need to take certain locations on the map before you can then unlock certain um, units. So you've got Balcloth. Uh, is it Balcloth or Balcloth? I think it's Balcloth. Um, Balcloth units come from Burr Eminarikis over here. You need to take that region for even one turn, and then you've unlocked them. And then you've got the Variag units of the Horse Archer and the Foot Archer variants. And to get them, you need to take these two regions of Enmahath and Mataram. And then you've got the Arulad units. Um, so you need to take Elgar and uh, Rubar over here. And then that is it. Now there's an additional bit to that and i think you need to take uh dorwinian and then this region over here that is karasant i think and then you also need to take it's not karas falathrim it's uh strundost yeah so you need to take those three regions and then you get suryut chariots now there's additionally lest here and lest is where you get um, Udej Marines. And that's then, after we take that, we are able to build boats that uh, we can use to sail up and down the Keldewin and in the Sea of Rune. So, as I already alluded to, the first port of call, as we segue on from the ports, is to Noble. take these two regions over here. So we're going to take out Lokan Rukar, who has the Lokrim bodyguard, standard bodyguard, halberdier unit, very good, particularly in the early game, with slaughter any cavalry. Um, you're going, actually, maybe we should have sent you over there, because um, this is this is closer. Um, it, it matters not, it matters yes, not. No We're going to go down there and do that. I mean, I'd, I think that's probably enough there. Obviously, yes, he's no probably going to hold on to any any melee that come at him, and then we've got crossbows. I do quite like crossbows. They're very slow at firing, but if you get them to fire, they will slaughter everything. So, and they're armor-piercing as well. But we do need a garrison over here, and we also would like a diplomat. Pop that in, and um, as I say, I do like crossbows, but let's just get some melee infantry, because I feel like they're the ones that are going to die very quickly um, in both of these uh, regions over here. So, the plan of action is take that, take that, and then we'll look at uh, maybe going up here. The dwarves, of course, in the auto expansion, they get Skarn over here. So if we were to take these two regions, we'll immediately border them, and then we'll have to deal with that. But of course, 
we need to first unite the clans. And also Leicester's one of them. So we will have to take Leicester eventually. That's got a very large garrison. We're not going to do that just yet. So we're going to hop on into the first the first turn of this uh, campaign. I put in the Mason's Hall, by the way, just to reduce building times and costs. Because it's good to get that. It's two turns and we've got the money for it. Right, in we go. Something I did actually forget, and just as a point to prove that I do not know, um, uh, should we take him? Yeah, let's take him. Uh, that I do not really know anything about this faction is that we didn't even have a spy, and I forgot to use him. So, let's uh, get him to come down here real quick. Oh, there we go. There is Mataram. And, ooh. Ooh, I do. Ha oh, he's got. Pretty good stats, if you can see all that. How can he see all that? He's got only two substitute, subterfuge. Um, but they've got Variag Nobles, and that's just the standard Candish bodyguard. And then they've got Candish Raiders and Candish Hunters. These are the two units that we will be getting if we successfully take these two regions. Now, looking at that, though, um, I feel like we're just going to go and... Oh, can we not make it there? Oh, that is so frustrating. Um, well, next turn we should be able to attack that. And whilst our faction leader, who's swelling in number, which is fantastic to see, is up to 67 men in his battalion. Dwarves of Erevor do not like us. Recruitment reports. Right, we've got the diplomat. Now, as I already said, we are not going to be flogging off our map information. Um... Because we are a secretive nation, where um, we've got, we harbor imperial uh, thoughts, if you like, uh, where we kind of serve the dragon cult. We are members of the dragon cult. Um, that is kind of a theme of this faction. And there we go, dragon cult's knight. It's not really part of the lore, but it's just kind of a flavorful thing that the DAC team have decided to add in. Um, just to give it some of its own, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, jazz. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, just a bit of extra flavour. So we are in a, in a reluctant alliance, really, with the Barry Eggs of Canned and Mordor. In that we potentially might end up betraying them. But at the beginning, you know, we're just humble, humble beginnings and all that. We, we are just seeking to... You know, reunite the clan and then our thoughts may turn elsewhere. Right. Also, Darwinian get Isle of Nibir. I didn't realise that. Well, I do know that because I have played as Darwinian, but I kind of forgot about it. Like, But they're not going to have any ships, are they? Because like, if they came and immediately took our capital, which, by the way, is a city, uh, so it can grow one more time. Um, yeah, that, that would be very bad, but I think it'll be okay. So he's free upkeep in there. And then we're just going to fill out our fort here, which is very useful to have. That's going to be filled out with whatever units we train over there. But yes, um, it's just another end turn. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's a nice little script. Oh. So it's just shown the Withered Heath. It's not the Withered Heath, is it? That's, uh, oh, Relics of the Dragons. Right, um, you can all pause and read that. Uh, I have basically just skim read it myself. Um, so, yeah, we should send our diplomat into Vale of Anduin to Beyond's Hall. Um, and then Kingdom of Dale, so Eskaroth to the Long Lake as well. And what else? And then to the Withered Heath. So, Spy to Withered Heath, and then... Diplomat to go to Beorn's Halls and Eskaroth. Okay. And if our diplomats and spies fail in acquiring these artifacts, we can turn to our influence among the military officers and launch campaigns to conquer these settlements. Ooh, excellent. Uh, Isengard have attacked Rohan. Not entirely improbable. Uh, so we've got Mistrand, that thing. Let's have a look at our financial summary. Absolutely appalling. And it's going to go into the red next turn. So let's spend what what is going to give us the most amount of money. Um, of course, we can get communal farming. And that's going to get us a decent amount of money. Also known as 68. So that's going to get us 68 gold coins plus the 
uh, population growth bonus of uh, 0.5. Or you can get Gren Exchange, which is basically getting you nothing. Apart from the building income, which is 50. But then it will give us trade. Or we can get Leather Tanner, which will improve any units that we acquire here. And I'm kind of inquired to get that. Leather for that. Just give... Yeah, so that's going to give us plus one defense on our clansmen. I kind of want to get that. It's 40 gold coins. It's going to take two turns to build. Although, we are going to pretty quickly run out of money. Let's just pop both of those in there. We can put them all in the fort. Um, obviously, we will get more money. Ooh, even more money. I didn't even notice that we had that. So, we can take Mataram, get two grand. Although, that's not going to take us out of debt. But... Um, we will Are they them four turns? We shall endure outside it's their wall. a town. They're going to have, obviously, all of those pesky to towers. Strike. I've learned something from my Gondor campaign in particular. And my Angmar campaign is, actually, if you can have a unit of, or two, of siege engines. Um, what I mean by that is, like, a baluster or a catapult. It makes it so much better to attack uh, settlements like this so you can just take out the towers and then they, you kind of negate all bonus that the defenders get and i see that almost as as a necessity just how good the towers are in this mod and i feel like they might even come out and attack us and if it, if they don't it's only four turns anyway um as i said we're not doing any cheesy tactics because um that's that's too well not that kind of cheese anyway <laughs> um let's come over here with our spy and as you will. looks like it's basically the same kind of army as what we've got in there. So I think the plan that we're going to go for, take Mataram and then take Enmahath as well. And then if we can take Bert and Minarakis, then we'll unlock the Balcloth as well. And then we shall move up to take these two regions. And then obviously we'll border the dwarves, but that'll give us some better time than to take Lest. And, and, you know, when we've taken less, then that is all of the clans of the East united. And then, obviously, to get the Suryu chariots, you need to take lands off Dorwinian. But um, I think now we just have to wait until our men get in position. Our diplomat, though, we can get trade rights with Dorwinian if they... Strindost is just there. There we go. Um, our relations are abysmal. And we have got no influence, so this may not come... It's Ooh. Good to see we could reach an Excellent. Until we meet again. So, only trade rights, because, you know, we're sneaky-peaky. And we also do have access to merchant guilds. Let's just have a look here real quick. Let's have a look-see. Yeah, so we get two tiers of the Warriors Guild, that's all it is. Um, it's just got some fancy name because we are of the Dragon Cult. Uh, melee weapon bonus and... Oh, you can even get Dragon's Wrath Guildsman there. Very fancy unit. And if you were to be ever so lucky and get this before the drag um, <laughs> before the Barracks event, then you can recruit them. And also, their armor is very indicative of what our late game armies get. And then, of course, then we get the Merchant Guild, which is very good because you can get a Merchant... Um, works exactly as it does in the base game in Med 2. But something that we get and no one else gets, I think, unless... do they, I don't think can get them. Or Harad. Uh, we get the trading plazas and exchange and posts. And these are just absolutely ridiculously good. I mean, even the building income is really good. They do cost quite a lot. But that increase in tradable goods is obscene. Especially once you've got all the trade around the Sea of Rune. Uh, probably one of the best regions in the game for money. But let's just end the turn. Oh, I just I just dipped a biscuit in some in some milk and uh, yeah, it, it split off and went into the into the cup. Oh dear. Um <laughs> that's gonna say there for the <laughs> until I finish recording. Anyway, um Lokan Rukar then, you're also going in there actually Actually, actually hold on a second. Let's just go with the spy just to have a look at what they've got. Okay, they've got exactly the same. Um, these guys are very good if the human controls. I mean, they're very good anyway. And uh, that is why we're coming down here. Because we can take them for our own rosters. And particularly these guys as well. They have been buffed since the previous version. They used to only have three missile attack. But even then, they were very good. 
as I found out, playing as Can once upon a time. Um, but again, we're just going to hold out because we need these units to not be killed by the by the um by the towers of course and we are going into the red already this is not a good stop but we do get these to come in so um that's nice did we not get a spy oh no we do have a spy i was just like why is there one in the queue but you get get an extra one well, that's okay uh, we'll pop those um units into that fort but um and we'll keep on sending our spy out this way Spy, our diplomat, because he needs to make it to either Beyond's Halls or Eskaroth. But I think we can just, unless something happens over here, we can just skip to when something does happen. Because we're not recruiting, we're not building anything. Notice the turn number, it is now a 6. So we missed out the 5th turn because we did nothing. Turns until surrender, 1 over here, 2 over here. They are going to probably sally out. Now, we have um, put these four units over here into this fort. But what if we just bring them down? Because we might very well need them to take Burr and Minarica. So, having them over there is completely useless. We're already in the red massively. Let's just bring him out somewhere where they are useful. Datan, our diplomat, he has been blocked. Uh, Freeland and the Dunlendings. No longer at war. Oh, this is why you need to manually move your diplomat. So, I think... So, Beyond's Halls, they're over here. Uh, we should be able to get that fairly easily. And then we'll come back over there. Because I want to go and speak with Dol Guldor anyway, I think. Um, you know, just for trade rights. Because we probably will meet somewhere over here eventually. Um, but then, I think this is going to be the first battle of the episode when we press this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, we got the rebels coming out, thinking they got a chance. We've got Captain Kibrail. Uh, <laughs> so they got one, two, three, four units of Candish Raiders. You're on the wrong. You should be fighting for me. And then one, two, three Candish Hunters and one Variag Noble leading the line. But we, I mean, um. We, we, we're, we're okay. I mean, we've got four units of missiles. We might have to do some sneaky peeky tactics here. Not one of us shall fail to keep on. And into battle we go then. So they're going to come on over there. And, um, oh, what should we do? Let's put these into loose formation. Have them go right there in front. I want these guys to take the fire and... Oh, don't start firing yet. Don't start firing yet. No, 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 no. Right. You just move back to there. You move back to there. And then you two. Don't be on skirmish, you fools. Come on over here. Then you guys come out over here onto the flanks. We're going to try and get their Candish Hunters somehow. That's kind of the goal. Right, which one are you? You come on over here. And... Why are you so slow? You need to be taking them out. Are they coming to attack us? No. Okay, well, you fire into that. And I have no idea what is happening here. But they are having an absolute nightmare. In fact, you guys come over here. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We're going to try and snipe them. These are just there. They're just there to take arrow fire. Because there are a lot of archer boys. And perhaps I should have just left these guys in over there because this is going to be very difficult. But there are the flaming arrows, as you can see. Are you? Who are you firing at? You are firing at the correct target. It's good to see. It. Right, let's sandwich these fools. They do have skirmish mode. But too late. And what are the stats then on these guys? 8 and 10. Very aggressive. And something interesting is about them that they do have a shield with stat with their second sword although they are getting shot a bit there so um, we kind of need these guys to go there maybe and if we could get some shots in the rear oh, we're shooting at them that's actually a good target how are our arcs pretty good pretty good 
They've only got two missile attack, but when you've got that many of them, just as Arahir Galadirathon always says, that's still a lot of damage. And uh, I'm just worried about them taking too much fire. We are winning the battle. Thank you. Excellent. Um, yeah, you just keep... Oh, they're charging. So you keep on firing. You just keep firing at the Baryag nobles or just into that. Wow, I hate the Cantabrian circle. It's so frustrating to target a man. They're still taking fire. They're getting a bit... Uh, get a bit bit killed over there. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. But it's going pretty well, I think. And... I mean, they're eventually going to have to come in once they've spent all of their arrows. Right, you just come a bit closer then because you're having a hard time. And you... Oh, they're, they're routing. Well, that's excellent. Right, charge in. Actually, no, 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 no. Charge in at these Candish Hunters. Just take them out. And uh, someone's getting charged. Oh, it says over there, obviously. Right, you fire into that. And then you lot also, if you can just fire at the Candish Hunters, you'll get some shots in on those Cav as well. Because they're going to have to come in eventually. And who are you firing at? Right. I don't know. It's hard to say. I'll be interested to see what the stats are on on um, this guy over here. He's already down to 97. He must be taking a few shots. We've got those guys in reserve yet. Right. Just charge in there. Just charge in there. They can defeat those Candish Hunters, I think. Oh, if you can catch them in melee, though, that'd be fantastic. Now, I don't know if these crossbow... Oh, are they coming in to fight? Are they out of... Oh, no. They're just coming in a bit closer. To shoot at us. I, I don't know if the crossbows are doing any any good there. So actually just, just fire over there. And you guys aren't even firing. I think we can send these guys in. We'll send them in over there. And send these guys. Because we are actually in melee over there. We've caught them. Right go in. These guys. If those Candish raiders do decide to come on over here. Oh. Oh, what is happening here? Right, come back, come back. Catch him, catch him now, catch him. Oh, they're charging. Right, okay. You guys don't be doing that. We might just send in our general. Or let's send him around the side. Like so. And we'll send these guys to cut off the exit of retreat. They will have no chance of retreating once we do this. That is the plan. These guys are coming around the side. And then we're just going to try and use up our ammunition, really, first. Because right, we'll kill them far sooner by doing so. We also have a, a special ability. And the special ability is usually quite good. And actually, for us, it is very good. It re uh, increases our combat effectiveness by, was it 150%? For close to a minute. Um, and also has a chance of infighting for the enemy. So let's get a couple of shots in there. Even with our crossbows as well. I mean, they're wavering. I don't know if it has a morale penalty. I don't think it does. Although, I say that and they've just run away. Right, get a, get a few bolts there as well. Nice. And are they running over here? Right, let's keep them over there. We don't need everyone over here. And don't be firing anymore. Right, chase them. Chase them. We don't want them getting in the settlement. Oh, they've actually already got some in the settlement. What is left here, then? What is left? Right, uh, let's not be firing at our own men. We probably lost a few there. In fact, we've basically lost all of our Daritai warriors. But, um, there's only four... Four of these nobles left. We could just sacrifice some of them, some of our men, and uh, shoot them with the crossbows. But nay, we don't do that round here. I mean, we kind of do. I wouldn't really mind doing that. But we're going to send in our general into melee, and uh, we're going to finish this as it should, as we mean to continue, because he's going to. Stroll on into melee. Let's just use Serpent Elixir. 
get a bit of a boost there. And, well, you just... Yeah, you deserve to die. You just ran into him and then shrugged. And you were like, oh, what was that? Well, it was the man on the bloody horse right in front of you. And then you got killed by taking a sword to the back. But there we go. Someone else uh, had more dexterity with their... Uh, with their hands and stuff. And functioning eyes. So in we go. Now we've just got these guys to do the final bit. Let's send in our general as well to speed this up. So um, so that we can move on to better and bigger battles. My first impressions then of these Loknar Rim is that, I mean, they're okay. Uh, what are his uh, melee stats? 8 and 15. That's with 2... Uh, plus two in melee from its experience and plus one from the melee weapon bonus so they're actually five and 15. I mean they're decent particularly at this point but I wouldn't be like down on my down on my knees just screaming out to the to the heavens because I'm just so happy but Khan Margos you did well we won and we didn't lose too many what are the kills like 118 Daritai hunters these two with the two missile attack beating the Loknar Rim I mean, they certainly had better um, better targets, but quite a lot of friendly fire there. 25 and 13, they have unfortunately perished, but that is the way of the melee combatant. I could have just said, way of the warrior, but or way of the warrior. You know, I can't really do a Scottish accent, really. Um, but uh, for those in the UK, you'll know what Raven is. Right, Occupy... Enemy camp sacked. We even got a, a Brucey bonus of 300 there for that. And next turn, we should be able to get Enmahath. Um, although, maybe we... Oh, no, we're okay. We're okay. 100% there. But let's have a look at this army, then. Absolutely. I mean, all those warriors died valiantly. I mean, they, they required... A sacrifice and we gave it to them right so you're going to move on and our spy actually could move um i forget where it is i think it's right there so if we move in that direction oh my memory has no bounds oh it doesn't have a whole lot in there though balcloth uh, yes yeah, so, oh it's balchoth is that right balchoth do you know what i just checked and it is Balchoth. And I'm so ingrained into always saying Balcloth. Now that I'm actually playing as as Rune, I'm like actually reading them properly. No, that is definitely a C and an H. And I just checked to see if that was right. And it was. I mean, I've been... It's not just me. So I obviously... I, I'm a fan and uh I'm, well i'm a subscriber of arahir galadirathon and he's always said balcloth as well it's balchoth unless there's some kind of weird pronunciation that tolkien intended for the easterlings where an h is an l or something uh but no that's wow okay but anyway as we swiftly move on from that uh, massive embarrassment we've got three units of them and then we've got balchoth tribesmen which are just javelin men they're not very good but um you know 177 of them um and they will be quite good up against any kind of chariots or beasts i don't know i can't think of any but um yeah so only six units there and those are the ones that then we would get if we incorporate them into our empire. So I'm sure they'd be very glad to do that. Um, so low tax rate in there. Under way. And we can't build anything. We cannot build anything. There is gold here in Enmahath. And you do gain Easterlings. Um, the Easterlings do get a bonus from gold. With their late tier units. So with their post barracks events unit. Um, that are all gold and stuff. So if we go here. And have a look at, like, say, the Lokgamp Rim. They all have, like, this kind of armor that you see in the films. And you gain, you get improved replenishment of those units in settlements that have the gold resource. So you've got it here in Enmahath. Now, 
this is something that I've got from the ov faction overviews of Ara here. So if it's wrong, then um, that is the source I'm using. But you can see on the map where else they are. And there's some in Strandost and over here in Western Darwinian in uh, Karasant. Oh, no, it's not Karasant. Karasant is that one. Uh, in Sant Anui. So we kind of obviously want to get those. And beyond that, there is gold, I think, at Erebor over here. Yes. And after that, then you go to like Dane's Halls, maybe. Maybe. Is that a gold mine? I think one of these is a gold mine. But I don't know. Um, anyway, we must now wait for our faction leader to take care of these rebels. And then I think we'll be ready to move for Burr and Menarikis. Um Also, let's just, before we end turn, let's have a look at our culture. So we are men of the east. There's quite a lot of Northmen here. Others, don't know what others is. I think that's only like for Ents, really, that you get that. And Nomadic is what can get if they go for the Blue Wizards. But, uh, yeah, we might have issues leaving that anytime soon. Okay, here we go. We've had the faction air. Now it is time for Lokan Rukar, our faction leader. Show what his metal is. Um, so it's the same army. We've got a different composition. We do have crossbows, two units of hunters, but we don't have... I mean, we've got a tanky individual here, so maybe he can catch them, but he might not because he... He's very slow. So, in we go. We shall not fall or flee. So, once again, as it is a sally out battle, they will be coming immediately. I think it worked quite well with these being in loose formation. But something that we do need to maybe do. So, you go there. We're going to go straight on in with our faction leader. Who we can't even... Oh, we can put him in loose formation. Never mind that. Uh, let's put him in loose formation just to... Make sure he spreads out and then maybe he can actually encourage some of these dudes into melee. And let's just put these on the flanks for now. Because, uh, oh, you already are. Excellent. Pop you down there. And archers, do not be firing. Don't fire yet. And you're also in terrible positions anyway. Because you're just going to be blocked by some of our own units. And the crossbows, they're the main killers here that we're going to send in as soon as possible we're taking shots already but we're just gonna send him on in there perhaps uh, ill-advised in fact let's send these guys immediately on over there um do not be running over there we're gonna try and flank because it worked pretty well last time wait does he have a new oh yes nice i mean he's taking a lot of damage there ah oh, but he can't he can't catch him he's rubbish Oh, nice. We've got them. We've got them. Okay, I'll, I'll set off for that. Right, go tight formation. And then we're going to sandwich the boogers. Um, oh, my God. They've got so many. We've got so many of these fools. Um, oh, but we've... Why are you like that? Right, just, just go and attack someone. Please. Right, so you're going to go like that. I mean, we'll catch them eventually. There's a few stragglers always. So you go on over there. Oh, this is kind of annoying. Come on over. And you go like so. And we're going to use our archers to... We could fire in at them. Who is our general? What is our general doing? I mean, I think he's that guy. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. Totally fine. Please run. In we come with the charge. Smashing. Um, and we've got them in melee. So we're holding on. We're not really doing a whole lot of damage to them. They're not the best target really for crossbows. But someone that is would be those Variag nobles. Let's try and get a bit closer. And then you guys just fire at those Candish Raiders for now. If they're that close then that would be really good. Fights with horns made but yeah, this is just we very difficult to... And also, just go into loose formation because we can't be having too many of you going down. I'd really want to go and flank those Candish Hunters, but, but we need this security in place for these men. Else they will just die to those cavalry units. Similar to what is trying that what they're trying to do over here. 
Indeed, they're now in melee. Although that's quite good. They are in melee. That's going to let us do this. Just flank him. And then we could shoot them in the back. They do have shields. Um, oh, they're wavering though. Do not waver. Fight, you fools. No wavering around here. Oh, they suck. They suck so much. Um, right, you are firing in over there. You're taking shots. They're holding, though. They're holding. Right, just start firing. Start firing. There's, like, none of our men there anyway. But I... Uh, why do you suck so much? We're not going to get very many kills here before they rout, so... Oh, but we've won over here. So, General, you keep firing or killing stuff over there. And you all can have to go and see if you can smother those Candish Hunters. But it's not worked quite as well as it did previously. And those three Daratai warriors have now fled. So, I mean, <laughs> if they came into melee, they would crush us. But they're not going to. So, hopefully we can do significant damage to them. There's far more of us than there are of them. So, we shall see how that goes. And... We might be able to trick these a little bit. Wait, where are those? Right, they're definitely trying to get into melee with our crossbows. They're just trying to flank them without... Oh, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, see, what you can do is if you run your men past past an enemy, then they, um, they might not think that you're attacking them, so they won't skirmish. Oh, and we've actually won that battle over there. And our general is tidying things up quite nicely there and we are slowly making our way through all of them but I hear a charge someone's getting charged it's probably us are you, you're still firing in over there oh do not be firing anymore right you don't need to be in loose formation either come on over here they're probably out of ammunition that's why they're coming at us like so so you guys get on over here and you just get nice and tight our to our general yeah, they're going to charge in over there instead. And if we can just run away a little bit. No, actually, just stay there. Just stay there. We'll have the crossbows come in. Sort them out. And you just keep on firing at whatever it is that you're firing at over there. And down goes the general. That's a good thing. Also, Captain Obvious. They should run if we... I don't particularly want to be going into their settlement, though, so I prefer for them to come out of there. So, and we come with the crossbows. I do like crossbows. You have, seeing, like, a crossbow volley, like, there's the anticipation of, like, what's to come here. And uh, it's not a euphemism at all. But, uh, and then you just see them all fall. And even if you've got, like, highly... I mean, that wasn't very good, I suppose. I mean, they're not very good crossbows either. But... Um, if you've got even highly armoured units, like elite warriors, and you just take them out like that, it's just very, it's very satisfying. Right, we've got some more, more of these than we did previously. Let's send them in. No, we're just going to have to send them in to uh, finish the job in the settlement. And uh, what is going on over here? They will bleed, have they? They have. Have we killed everything? can't even see what you're shooting at. Oh, they're over there. Right. Uh, they're traveling. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. These pesky cavalry have come in for our crossbows. That's not what we wanted. Not what you want at all. Come on in. Come on in. And you run away. We absolutely need them. They are the best damage per second dudes that we've got. We can't actually get in into the settlement because they just don't want to come out. So, obviously, we are blocking the way, but it's very tedious anyway. Uh, we could probably just skip on forward though. We will eventually see them come forth. Oh, there we go. As soon as they came out of the settlement, they fled. We do not need to go any further. We lost a similar amount. Um, let's have a look at the kills. 141, Blue Crim Bodyguard. Absolute beast. Daratai Warriors as well doing very well in a favourable fight this time. And uh, yes, nice one. Down they go. And Enmahath is ours. And 
We should see... Let's occupy. We should see something happen now. I think we do get some units. Candish clans gather. So there we go. With the taking of Mataram and Enmahat, the local clans of Candish warriors have been broken and now have started to unite under a strong leader of great skill and ferocity. That being us, obviously. Because we are amazing. Zend Emissary, it's a good dog old dwarf. I already am, mate. Yes, already master. am. Um, I don't think they actually yes, hold that will. region. No. Despite... Ooh, March of the Northmen, though. Old. Um, wait, how many turns do we have? Five. I mean, I'm sure they hold this region over here. And they, I think they probably hold that as well. So, uh, four turns, three turns. Yeah, we'll make it to, I think it's Austin Gile. Sorry, not Austin Gile. It's Austin Gale. So, we'll go there. And then we'll go north to Beyond's Woods. And then to Eskaroth with our trusty dude over there. We actually made some money that turn, which is fantastic. And Windvale and Woodland Realm are... Super duper happy friends. And here we go then. We've got Daritai Warriors. Very good units actually to go up against the Balcloth. Balchoth. The Balchoth. God damn it. <laughs> wow. Learn something new every day. I mean, every yes, single sir. campaign I do, I learn something new. Like, in my Woodland Realm campaign, which is the first campaign I did on this channel, I learned that actually, moving your capital is not only very cheap, it's very, very good. I mean, obviously... I knew about moving the capital would probably save you money, but previously it would cost you like five grand, but now it's 150. And you can really cut down on your corruption. Then I went to, with the Gondor campaign. I mean, there's a long list of things I've learned with that. Um, but uh, now I've learned, uh, well, hang on. We've got, mate, you've got to get a better name. Arslan. Uh, <laughs> what a name. Uh, Arslan here has Variac Nobles. Oh, very interesting. Um, I mean, they're very good units. 11 and 20, and they've also got 6 armor-piercing missile damage. Skilled against mounts, they're pretty good at charging. And then we've got Candish Raiders and Candish Hunters. Um, there's their stats, sorry, but uh, 4, 3, and 8. Pretty good, they're pretty good. They're better than our Hunters. But how do we train... Oh, okay, so we can already train them. Do they just come out of the regular... Okay, so out of the meeting hall, we get our Daritai. Oh, that's, no, that's just our, that's just our trash. That's our militia. It's the same for pretty much every other nation. Town guard, Daritai warriors. Uh, what building do we then get? Oh, we've got tent of the Khan. Building cost reduced by 5% global effect. That's really good. Morale bonus to troops trained here. That's semi-decent. Retraining costs and public order bonus. Where are we getting... These Candish... Oh, okay. At the stables, we get Candish Raiders. And Candish Hunters from the Practice Range. I probably should have looked at that beforehand. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Dark Sanctuary as well, giving the population growth bonus. is really good. Really, really good. Similar to how Orcs have that as well. Orders. Right then. Well, these guys... Orders. We could send... I mean, we could do with some cavalry down here. Because cavalry are always useful just to harry opponents and, um, you know, for purposes of um, chasing down enemy, enemy units. But let's put the rest of you just in there because we've already got a governor in there. We don't need another. We could bring you down here just to hold on to Enmahath while Lokan, our Lokan goes forth. Because I reckon if we take him out, yeah, they don't like that. Although, uh, maybe with the low tax rate change. Maybe. I mean, that'll be next turn anyway before we head on out over there. Of course, the old Rune Road. I'm pretty sure in previous overviews, I did see that you needed that to unite the clans. But this runs all the way from like, that river crossing to there. And there's Barfest, which is going to be at least a castle, I think. It's going to be quite a tricky one to get. Similar to last, so let's first get that place, and then in order to not border Dorwinian, although I think we do border it there then, um, we're not going to take less just yet. We're going to allow them to head and try and take that before we do, because they probably will fail, and then we can head on over there. But again, uh, let's end the turn. Betrothed, Uldor. Who's Uldor? Who is Uldor? Not Uldor. Where door? Oh, there's Uldor. 
This guy looks like the guy from Narnia in um, Prince Caps. Uh, is it Prince oh, Caspian? Okay. Can't remember. Um, in fact, that probably is what he is. Um, so he is a new general. We do have a family tree also, so that's where he's popped from. Let's take all those guys out. Add them in. That is a huge army now. Let's uh, head on out. I would like to pop a watchtower there, but we don't have the money. So, relations improved. Mordor likes us a little bit. Oh, we do even have a fort down there, of course. So, we could go and get that for improved capacity. And perhaps we could bring Arslan over here. Um, just to pop him in to Mataram. Because I'd rather have Khan Margos fighting than this guy. Even though he is very good and arguably better. Um, yeah, uh, it's difficult. Let's bring these guys over here, though, because, um, as I say, cavalry are very good. So you come on over here, and perhaps we can see... Um, oh, why have I done that? We've only got eight grand in the deficit. We can't be building any watchtowers. Uh, it would be nice, though, to see all this area. Anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it, then. So if we, since we cannot build anything... There's nothing to do. Let's bring you guy, you dude, you guys. There's one guy there. We'll bring you on over here and we'll try and get that diplomacy going. Right, uh, tenth turn. We've already raced through ten turns. Wait, hang on, what did I just see? Oh, Variags of Canned. I probably shouldn't fly through those, those that quickly. I think it was uh, peace negotiated between the Variags of Canned and Gondor, which is... Interesting to see. Of course, they don't You're border me. one another, I don't think. Right, there we go. The Not year. Narrows in of Mirkwood. Got three more turns for that. And... Uh, oh, we've got There's Brego no over here. Not. He's got... What are you? Oh, You're very Agnables as well. Um, Oh, maybe Arslan could does... deal with that. He's got two units of you. Cav. Let's just bring all this out, and presumably Karl Margos can hold on to that. I think we need to take care of that uh, rogue army anyway. So let's do that. And let's also go forth with our Bruski over here. And we're going to do the same thing again with him. He's got four turns. I wish we had siege equipment, like actual siege equipment. Or could we? we uh, no, we can't. There's like six units there. It would be very, very difficult to be able to... Although I don't know if the towers are that good for a town. Towns don't have the best towers, so I think we might be okay. And seeing as our monetary situation is dire, I think it would be quite useful to kill off some of our troops anyway. So I think we might just go on in there. Um, but first, let's attack this army. Bregor comes once again with those two units. And then they've got Marauders, which are just absolute trash. So we've got a very basic setup over here. And they're going to run away, aren't they? Let's uh, run after them. And see if we can get a few shots to make them change their mind. Without doubt, this is the most annoying part of oh, fighting against the AI, trying to pick a battleground for a proper good fight. So we've sent in, like, oh, crossbows, but they're just taking so much damage. Like, there's got so much cavalry and we've got absolutely nothing. This is why you really want um, horse archers. They're, they're really, really good. Marauders over there, they better not come into melee with these. I mean, we need to take a bit of a chance here. Let's send... Oh, if we could have just got into melee with them, that would have been fantastic. Marauders over there. They're definitely coming in to fight. Right, you pull out. Oh, they're going to... Oh, it's too late. It's too late. Oh, and they're... Oh. That is very unfortunate and very, very annoying. And you are going to have to just charge on in there. We've not got a very good army at all for this. And we've just lost our arguably best unit. You may as well just charge on in there. Like, you're firing into that. 
Like, you'll do good damage, but it's not going to be enough to save. It's just... Ugh. I mean... If we lose these units, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, it's less on the upkeep. Aren't you already... Why aren't you going in there? I thought I asked you to already attack. But... Um, yeah. It, I can't lie. It would have been really good to just take out this army. I think that Variag Noble is on its way in. You just make sure that you're firing. Those Marauders are taking a really long time to die. Far longer than I would have liked. If you shoot at that... No. Do we just run away now and see if we can save these units? Or are they even worth saving? I don't think they really are. Oh, wow. Do not go over there. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. if I didn't think I clicked that far over. But... I mean, they're already... There's not enough of them to make a difference. There's no point to saving them. Well, our infantry has just been showing up to be absolutely trash. And are we going to make it off the battlefield? That is the question. These marauders are catching us. No, wait. We made it off. Crushing defeat. Absolute crushing defeat. We didn't have the terrain advantage. Uh, we didn't have the cavalry advantage. Cavalry in this game is supreme. I was hoping they'd at least let us shoot at them before they charged in. But no. Um, so, well, that might help our monetary issue, though. Baggage train lost. We lost money, but... Uh, How's that looking now? Look, we're still... We're only losing 184 now. That's even after losing, what, 300 in that previous one? And we did hold on to Arslan. Really, he is just an arse. Yes, right, but Khan Margos, you are free to leave. And if they do attack that Moral settlement, then... Oh, 70%. That'll be fine. If they do attack that settlement, then Arslan can go with it. Because uh, he Orders. did not perform... There, as a general. He is an ass general. <laughs> right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, we're going to have then the turn to go for Burr Eminarchus. And hopefully that provides us with a more fruitful adventure. Oh dear. <laughs> it's exactly as I feared. And Arslan has been Was besieged. Luckily for him though, he cannot be uh, attacked. Because they've only got cavalry. Now, we do require this unit to come on over here. And we also will require these Candish Hunters to come on over and assist Khan Margos. And I'm very grateful that we've got those units. But uh, we may have some issues taking out these units because Variag Nobles... But yeah, mainly the Candish Hunters because they can just do so much damage at range and take very little. So, we'll go for that. Khan, um, look Khan over here. He does not require cavalry for a siege like this. So, in we go. We'll build a bunch of rams. We may have to go in and attack it. But, um, we won't really be able to recruit any more units. That's the only worry. Let's just have a look at that. Dorwinian hold that, but uh, Austin Eru... Or Austin Eru, yeah, that's uh, the Plains of Sorrow. That is not held by Dorwinian, so we don't have to fear them just yet, but they do border this, uh, the Runic borderlands via the mountains of Dorwinian also. So they may be approaching, war may be approaching us even faster than we first thought. But hopefully the Balshoth will assist us. So, uh, one more thing then. Let's just move the Diplomat. We've got two more turns, yes, so master. I hope that... I remember this correctly. There it is. And is trade there rights. I can do for you? There we go. Nice. And we shall then move on up for Beyond's Halls. And see, I, I'd be very interested to see what that uh, that script is like. Because in the overview, it did say that you get some ancillaries. So, some traits for your generals. And... Um, that might be quite interesting to get. It doesn't like make or break the game or anything like that, but you know, make it a bit more fun. So, Khan Margos, hopefully, shall do the job over here. And over here, let's end to turn. 
Holmberg Siege. Gift two grand. That's doing absolutely nothing for us. Although we've got a profit margin of 123 over there. And um, yeah, Arslan, he's just languishing in there. Just being like, why, why me? Why me? Why do I suck so much? But he does. And his own men are now making fun of him. Even though that <laughs> there's only 45 of them. They are all laughing at him. Indeed, the whole... The whole... I don't know what. Are we a kingdom? I guess we're not really. What would we be? Like, uh... The Lok Khan isn't really a king. Nor is he like an emir. Or anything like that. Uh, I have no idea. Let's just call it uh, our... Our empire. There we go. So that would make him like an emperor. Anyway, um... I think we can just end the turn again, can't we? We're not uh, going to attack that. Just yet. We've got the rams incoming. We might want to encircle the town completely. But I'd be more interested to see what we can do over here. Oh, the rebels are here. The rebels are here. I did not realize that they'd have so many units over here. Elfhelm. Oh, okay. What does he come with? Balchop, a tribesman. Again, not so much of an issue. That cavalry, though, would have been really, really useful. But we've got uh, a lot of archers. So, like, roughly, like, three-ish units of archers and crossbows. So, we can shoot them up. And our infantry, particularly our faction leader, will chew through that. And we already know what that is. But I am going to leave that for the next episode. We have massively, like, raced through the turns. And apologies for not, perhaps, having too much excitement just yet but the battles will come the battles will come you know uniting the clans is not easy if it were then uh, you would start with more than one region but the daratai must suppress everyone else around them and the legend of arslan will it get trodden into the dirt or will he learn from his his mistakes and live to fight another day after being saved by our disgruntled faction heir who has to return from the capital to come and help him out against a feeble rebel general of the plains of the east so thank you very much for watching and if you do like this video then do feel free to like it and if you like to see more and make sure that you don't miss any further episodes then do be sure to subscribe here in England, we've got lockdown beginning today as I release this episode. So I am technically at home all the time. So, woohoo. Anyway, I'm going with Gandalf. Good day.